I wanted to do this week's podcast while I was doing my makeup because I've seen that all over TikTok and YouTube. However, I realized I'm not good at multitasking. I really have to concentrate while I'm doing my makeup, so I don't think I talk well while I'm doing it. So I'm just going to talk to you and I'll do my makeup after. Today I'd love to talk about staying open while dating. While many of us think we are open and we will acknowledge like, yeah, it's a good thing to be open. How many of us are truly open? Because if you're not, you will miss opportunities left and right. I'll give you an example from when I was dating. Well, first, I think I can recognize it in other people because that was me at one time when I said, yeah, I'm ready for a relationship. I'm totally open. I had a coach at this time. His name was Gypsy. And he said to me, because I would always talk about my dating life whenever I went in, and this is probably like my seventh visit with him. And he said, okay, so when you're done with talking to me, when you go outside, if you were to meet your future guy, would you totally embrace it? And I said, yes, totally. Like, I can't wait to meet him. And Gypsy was about to say something, but then he just sat back and he smiled and he said, okay. And I knew exactly what he meant was, no, you're not ready. You keep fucking talking about this shit. You keep choosing the same type of guy. You are not ready. And I understood what he said. So I took that with me and I thought, hmm, what can I work on here to change that and truly be open? And one of those things is you do have to heal. And I go into this in my book, Show Up Finding Love for Independent Women. Different things work for different people when it comes to healing. The first thing is acknowledging where you need to heal. Because if you're closed off, most likely you're trying to protect yourself from something. Or you're still traumatized by, you know, something an ex did to you and then you associate that to future men or women that you meet. A few things that I did to heal. I had acknowledged parts from my childhood that I was hurt, like feeling not important, feeling abandoned. Some of these pain points never fully go away, but I would say the majority of that is healed in me. And if I still get triggered today by feeling not important or abandoned, I can recognize it and I don't blame other people. I directly go to, oh, that's me. That's the little girl in me. Another thing I had to heal was things with exes. Like, have I truly forgiven? my exes and this can take time too one cheated on me and that opened up a river of pain i had to do a lot of work on myself after that because the pain point of betrayal was also in me long before i met him and i also talk about that in my book um, so the healing will definitely help in allowing you to show up open what does it mean to show up open the number one way I can tell that someone is not open is if they meet someone or someone tries to introduce them to someone and they automatically have an excuse as to why they're not interested. And it's usually a very trivial reason like his hairline or what he does for work or he looks too spiritual, something like that. Like you don't even know this person and all you're being judgmental off the bat. You are being closed off. Now, are there times that it's a legitimate reason? Absolutely. But what I hear when I hear when someone's closed off is it's usually like a stupid ass reason that has nothing to do with creating their relationship of their dreams. It's usually based on some kind of past conditioning. When I was dating, I started to date guys that were not my type. Like I used to be this judgy person. I remember I met this one guy at a conference once. I think we were in Hawaii and I remember seeing him and he was like a tall, good looking guy. But to me, I like, it was the type of guy I rolled my eyeballs at. Like he was really buff and he wore like, I think he was in a full on linen outfit, like linen shirt, linen pants, very charming, kind of like cheesy. I can't like, I'm like, he's such a cheese dick. That's literally like what I said in my head. I think he sold timeshares in Hawaii or something like that. He was like that guy, like a movie character. And I was like, oh my God, I would never date a guy like him. And over the course of somehow getting to know him at these conferences, 
I realized like he was a really nice guy. We connected and had so much fun. Was he my future husband? No. And probably thank God because it, that wouldn't have been a good marriage. But we had an amazing time. And after giving someone a chance and not being so judgmental, I real, realized the point is be open and just get to know people. And that's when dating began to be fun for me. It's not like I'm trying to make this work. I'm trying to find my future husband. It's stay curious. Let's see what happens. I went on this date in India. I was at a friend's wedding in Jodhpur and someone came up to me and it was a friend of the family and he said, oh, I heard about you. You're the photographer, you know, from LA. For those who don't know, my background is in photography. And he said he was planning to go to film school in New York or something like that. And anyways, long story short, he took me out on a date and I just stayed open like, sure, let's hang out. That was one of the best dates of my life. Not because he was like my future boyfriend or future husband. It's just because I stayed open and I said, yes, we went zip lining. We had an amazing dinner. He took me shopping. And at the end of the night, we hugged. I had a great time. So that's the mindset to be in if you want to date well and just feel good. And that is when the relationship of your dreams comes as well. And the relationship of your dreams isn't necessarily what you think it's going to be. It's not, I'm going to meet my forever person. We're going to get married. You can have a lot of meaningful interactions and relationships with people that not, uh, they don't necessarily need to be long term, but they still hold a special place in your heart. If you would like more insight on this, you can purchase my book on Amazon. The audiobook version is available now for all you busy people. And if you have any questions, feel free to write it in the comments below.